Hi. Hi, Greg. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you this morning? Super Great good. Thing. Good. Jeffrey, uh, Natasha, I just want to thank you this morning for joining us on Film Fiend. Uh, first of all, Jeffrey, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, well, The Watchmen, The Losers, every, everything you've been in. But especially right now, I can't wait for Magic City to get back on the air. Oh, Thank you very much. Yeah, matter of fact, I leave in two days to go back to Miami to start filming season two. So uh, I'm as excited as you are. I, I can't wait. But right now we're talking about uh, we're talking about the possession. Um, Indeed. It's a little bit different than Magic City. I felt <laughs> like I needed to go and like find some priest or something to help me out after just watching the trailer. But uh, it, it's it's a little different than that. It takes like a Jewish side yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I think every movie or most movies that we've seen based on exorcism and there's been like kind of the Catholic uh, twist to it. This one uh, uh, is a Jewish take uh, and have to go and talk to some rabbis and go to the synagogue to try to fight this thing. Um, um, but the Dybbuk box is, is a Jewish, it's the Jewish demon. A Dybbuk is the Jewish version of the demon and the Dybbuk box is... Uh, a box that the demon is hopefully trapped in for eternity until uh, until um, my daughter here, played by Natasha, uh, finds the box and, and and opens it and kind of frees this uh, malevolent malevolent demon into the world and 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 it attaches him, uh, it herself to Natasha. Now now speaking of this uh the scary Jewish box that that you've got going on here, it's uh I heard that. The offer was made for this to be brought onto the set or for you to go and see it, and neither one of you uh, seem very interested in that. Um, I think at one point, yeah, the, the um, owner of the box offered to bring it to set, and we were like, we we're like, no, thank you, we're, we're good. Um, why, why tempt fate, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> why tempt fate? <laughs> now, um, I, I was reading, Natasha was talking, they were talking about her, um, it's, it's a pretty scary movie, but the the feeling on the set was so much different so that you could actually get into it and kind of walk away feeling like it's a heavy scene but you could still walk away what was it like or was there anything natasha that you were able to pull from yeah i mean for sure it was a really amazing um learning experience for me the, the fact that you could walk onto the set and not know that you're on a horror movie because everybody became so close we had an amazing cast and amazing crew so it really helped lighten um the mood on set, and our director, Ole Bornadel, was phenomenal. I mean, he he took me away before each scene and kind of gave me a heads up with what to expect because it was a very, um, I mean, it was both physically and mentally challenging role, but I'm, I'm always, I love being challenged, so it was such a fun opportunity for me. Now, this is a, uh, a Sam Raimi-produced film, plus you've got Ole that, that, that's worked in it before and other things. What, what was it like kind of working with someone like Sam Raimi that, well, if you look at like his films in the past and the horror films, I mean, what, what was it like working in well, that atmosphere? Um, I mean, I think that's initially why, why I, you'd be attracted to a project like this is that Sam Raimi's name is attached to it. Sam, in the course of us filming, really, he was prepping uh, his movie Oz, and so he would watch our dailies and we'd get feedback that way. But really Sam's job was uh, getting this script um, and having it written and to his liking. And then he went about finding the director and he found Ole Bornadal and, and, uh, and then he kind of let Ole do his thing and, and Sam just kind of oversaw it. And, um, you know, it, but you're right. I mean, he, he kind of reinvented this, this genre, uh, you know, 20 years ago with Evil Dead and, um, uh, you know, and this genre is hopefully moving along and, and getting back to a place where there's great stories um, because I think it's kind of changed in the last 10 years and become about a lot of non-story and a lot of gore and some shaky camera and found footage. And, and this is more of a throwback to something that I think Sam wanted to do as, as well as uh, the movies that, that I think were effective, like, you know, uh, The Exorcist, for one, which we borrow heavily from. and 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 Rosemary's Baby and The Omen and The Shining that had stories and characters that you cared about as a viewer. And, and this is that, we hope. Now, speaking about stories, and we'll go a little bit lighter here, we have a question that we like to ask everyone. It's, um, it's basically, if you have time that you're not shooting something or, or you're, you're just 
watching TV and you go through, is there a movie or a television show, something that if you see it on TV that you can just watch over yeah, and over? Yeah, I mean, sure. I've got a lot of stuff that I, but um, I was talking about earlier, my scariest movie for me or the one that made the most impact was Jaws. And, and anytime I flip channels and I see, you know, Robert Shaw giving a speech about the Indianapolis, I will stop dead cold and watch it until the end. Uh, that gets me every time. Uh, Shawshank Redemption, I, I could never turn away from. I've probably seen that movie 300 times. So uh, th there's a couple off the top of my head. What about you? I love every movie I watch. I mean, I, I mean, no, I love That's studying it. That's an easy it. audience. I love <laughs> studying it is what I'm talking about. I mean, I love watching all actors and and um, their characters. I think it's great. But I, some movies, I loved Spider-Man growing up. That was like one of my all-time favorites. Sam Raimi film, exactly. by the way. Exactly, I know. I had like the full Spider-Man costume and everything. I watched that over and over. Um, Matilda, I watched that one so many times. And um, recently, I loved The Descendants. I've seen it a lot, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous movie. I like everything on Bravo. The Real Housewives of um, New York City. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. Yes, I love those Real Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, Natasha, we thank you so much for joining us this morning on Film Fiend. We encourage everyone to go out and watch The Possession. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Greg. Thank you so much.